The gardens and rooms of J. O'Callaghan's Marshfield home are where he typically works, writing and recording hours of audio stories and publishing children's books. But today the office is transformed so that O'Callaghan, a storyteller for more than 40 years, can share a piece of love letter, the story commissioned by NASA to celebrate their 50th anniversary. It was a windy Friday morning. A young woman, Kate de Cordova, was running down the sloping sidewalk. Here comes the sun. She smelled the salt sea. It reminded last night she was making spaghetti and she poured some salt into the spaghetti water. Phone rang. She picked it up. K -k 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 Kate? It was Jack Carver. She was shocked. Six months ago, she had cut their engagement off. K Kate, listen, something, something exciting has happened. Jack Carver, big, powerful guy. Got his PhD at MIT. But when he was nervous, he stuttered badly. Kate, Kate, listen, you, you know the, the Sunday Science Series, MIT? A Russian scientist can't make it. So my thesis advisor wants you and I to do a program on NASA. You know, it's the 50th anniversary. You've been an intern. Jack, great, great. When is it? It's th three weeks. Jack, I can't. I can't. I've got the GREs, Jack. I'm sorry, i got to run. She had hung up. And now, the subway was, was passing in the trolley. She had to get that trolley. Mechanical engineering at 9 o'clock. Nobody was late for mechanical engineering. Nobody. So she started to run, and just then, she saw an orange leaf, maple leaf, floating down. Then the wind took it up, and she leapt way up, and she caught it. Now she sprinted to the car, but the driver was closing the door, and a formidable woman on the trolley said, Wait! Kate leapt onto the trolley, paid, and the formidable woman said, Please, sit here. The formidable woman had a crown, white hair, pearls, gray, gray suit. She was clearly the empress of the streetcar. Kate sat down, the former woman said, what a leap, what a catch, you're an athlete or a dancer. Well, Kate said, I was at a good high school, soccer team, Exeter Academy, Exeter Academy, wonderful school, did you love it? I hated it. My roommate's dad was running the World Bank, my dad was running a little hardware store. Do you stick it out? I stuck it out and can I boast? Boast, boast. Senior year, I won a National Science Award and I wrote and directed the senior play. It was a smash. It was about the planets. Everyone loved it except the boy who played Pluto. <laughs> I'll bet you're a young professor. Oh, I wish, Kate said. I'm 27. I thought I'd be at NASA by now. Ah, oh, the Bahamas! No, 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 the space agencies, <laughs> NASA. What happened? A bump. Instead of going to Harvard, I went home. Dad had a terrible stroke. It took Mum and me four years to put the hardware store on firm footing. But I decided I wanted three things out of college. The Atlantic Ocean, I wanted a work-study program. I wanted to act and to write. That's what I've been doing. What's your dream? My dream is to do well in the GREs and get a PhD. No, 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 no. I mean your dream. What's your dream? Well, my dream is to tiptoe on the stars. That's a dream. That's a dream. Edith Whiteside, Kate de Cordova. Kate de Cordova, it's been a pleasure. This is my stop, Museum of Fine Arts. Edith Whiteside got up and was about to go, and Kate said, wait, Edith, take the leaf. You give me hope. Today, the mummies, the Egyptian section. Oh, no, members of the board, bunch of stiffs. <laughs> but you give me hope. You give me hope. Edith Whiteside left, and Kate 